Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Let's talk about what's actually going on with the Yeezy Gap engineered by Balenciaga Project. Anything involving Ye is going to make a lot of headlines, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of clear answers as to what this project actually is or what it's doing. We've been following Ye's journey in fashion since around 2006. We've been following Yeezy specifically since 2015, and I believe that this is the culmination. Yeezy Gap is the turning point that's been coming for that entire time, for a full 16 years. And the context here is really crucial, so grab a snack, get comfortable, Comfortable. We're gonna have the full reveal of how this works, but we have a lot of setup that's really necessary so that we can contextualize what we're looking at. Let's go through the basic building blocks of this project and figure out what each is contributing. So we have Ye, The Gap, and Balenciaga. Ye's lineage in fashion is so big and so influential that especially for my audience, it would take a few hours to summarize that fully, but we're just gonna stick to the pieces here that are necessary for our purposes right now. Ye was one of a few people who adopted an aesthetic years ago that would end up changing the public perception of fashion, and that was mixing high and low pieces. Obviously, Ye was not the only one to do this, and as much as I would like this to be a Virgil Gap Balenciaga video, it is not. Ye was crucial in the mass popularization of streetwear and bringing bringing millions of young people into fashion as a hobby. Why is this important? Because Ye changed the public priority in fashion from owning the right gear to following a vision. This is super crucial. If I was watching, I might have missed it. Pay attention, come in with me. Before Ye stepped in, sneakerheads, fashion victims, and the cringiest term of the 2000s, metrosexuals, all of those people were just acquiring products so that they could achieve a certain look. I need a new pair of Jordans. I want a peplum top. Oh, I would look so cool if I was wearing some Jinkos. All of this was just buying things so you could have a certain look to you. But Ye put us onto the philosophy that fashion insiders had already been doing for decades, and that is finding a designer whose vision you personally align with and then following that vision. So it was less of like, I wanna dress preppy or I wanna look like a rock star and more of the, I would like to align myself with the optimistic Americana of Ralph Lauren or I want to become the vision of futuristic uniformed utility that Helmut Lang started. Ye probably embodied this best at the Yeezy season three presentation where the crowd of people that were standing in the center of Madison Square Garden weren't even wearing the Yeezy collection. They were wearing thrift store clothing that was in the same color palette. As Ye evolved and made more clothes for the Yeezy line, he took this idea a step further when he kind of landed on the idea that utilitarian clothes are the ones that just make the most sense. Army surplus stores, technical gear, all of that kind of things. But oftentimes those literal items like Army Navy surplus store stuff, that gear is great. I've, I've bought plenty of that stuff myself. But oftentimes it's not made of very good materials and it's not manufactured in a very high quality way because it can't be. So Ye's plan was to adopt the aesthetic of outdoors gear, technical pieces, and military garb, and then mix them with quality materials and manufacturing. So he starts releasing collections, and I was actually lucky enough to be working in retail when the first Yeezy season came to stores. It was, it was actually really cool being a part of the beginning of that saga. But there was a problem. Most of the clothing offerings in Yeezy season one were priced at over $1,000 each. And this, to be clear, this isn't a problem for most brands in this vertical. Most brands that are carried on Essence are happy to make luxury items, charge luxury prices, and if the audience is there, it's all good. But Ye has always said that he wants everyone to have access to his product. And he's been able to accomplish that with the Yeezy shoes. I mean, he said at one point, like everyone who wants Yeezys will be able to get a pair of them. And for the most part, that has been true. There are some Yeezys now that are priced at under $100. It might not be the exact colorway or the exact model that you want, but if, if you want Yeezys, you can very likely get them. And it's really funny. Do you remember back in 2016 when Kanye called the CEO of Payless Shoes? He was publicly really driving home this idea at the time that it's like, I want everyone to be able to get a hold of these shoes. I just need the infrastructure to make them. And the, the CEO apparently didn't understand what the vision there was. And so he had to kind of let that die on the vine. But for anyone not in the United States, Payless Shoes is like the cheapest place to buy new shoes in the United States before Walmart kind of took over that. But yeah, the, the goal has always been, I, I want this to go out to the people. I don't want it to just be for the select few. I want everyone to have it. And that, friends, is where the gap comes in. Okay, let's see if we can get this. Hang on. If you're new here, hi, my name is Bliss. I'm a full-time independent, what the fuck? Okay, I, 
That was, that's literally the first time I've ever gotten that. I, I think I cheated. Look, if you came here and you've never been here before, please subscribe. I feel that I've earned it. I am a full-time independent fashion critic. I did like a huge breakdown of all of the references in the Donda event releases that were all engineered by Balenciaga as well. I've done coverage of Raph's work at Prada, and I have done a metric ton of coverage on Balenciaga. And if you need a place to talk about fashion with people that really want to actually talk about fashion, my private Discord server is the best place on the internet to do that. You have to join it through the Patreon. It costs three bucks a month, but uh, yeah, the community speaks for itself. That place is incredible. I cannot believe I just did that again. I swear I have never, I have never done this trick before today. That was the most successful Patreon plug I have ever done. Let's go. Feeling really good about this now. The Gap. For everybody who's my age or younger, I'm 32, you probably don't have a lot of reference points for how The Gap fits into fashion cultural history. So let's break this down a little bit. Fashion has always been about individualism, right? You're, you're buying these items and maybe paying a lot for these items in order to express your true self. That's at least the idea, right? Stand out from the crowd, be yourself, you're the lone wolf, you are the hero, you're the main character. But then, in the 90s, the Gap came in with a very different idea. Quote, the secret power of The Gap is that the product was meant to be a person's own. If you were walking down the street, nobody would stop you and be like, oh my God, you're wearing The Gap skinny black pants. They would be your black pants. And that quote is from Trey Laird. He's one of the advertising executives that's worked on Gap campaigns in the past. The Gap introduced this idea that you as an individual could wear sensible, understated, well-made, well-priced clothes that didn't make you stand out from the crowd. They promoted this idea that you didn't need to stand out from the crowd, that you were already yourself, you're already an individual. They ran a series of print ads called Individuals of Style that included a number of major players in fashion like Karl Lagerfeld and Naomi Campbell along with other just general creatives like a gallery owner and a, hilariously enough, Salvador Dali. Isn't that great? Did you know that that had happened? Just Salvador Dali selling some khakis. <laughs> Even in their TV ads, there would always be this idea of, hey, you don't need crazy clothes to tell people that you're a creative person. Just get good basic gear and then you can focus on your art. Also, bonus points if you can guess who this is. Gap campaigns have driven this message for decades at this point. There, there was a recent tagline for their video ads that just says simply dress normal. So here's the, the one underlying point that I really want to stick with you. So hey. No new tabs, please. No new tabs. Come back. Stay with me. Come on. Come on. There are a lot of examples of major corporations like H&M and Uniqlo that do collaborations with luxury designers so that they can kind of do this uh, social exchange with each other. The luxury designer gets paid by the fast fashion company like Uniqlo or H&M. They, they are paid money in order to do this collaboration. H&M and Uniqlo get to elevate their fast fashion juggernaut clothing because they now are associated with the designer. While those elements are at play here, I mean, the, the Gap's idea is that we would like to increase our social capital and Yeezy, I'm sure, is getting paid by the Gap to do this. I think there is something that makes this a little bit more than just another designer collab with a fast fashion house. We are going to save that for the end because we still have one more very important building block to cover. Balenciaga. So firstly, let's just clear up one major question that I certainly had throughout the entire rollout of these ad campaigns. What does engineered by Balenciaga actually mean? So concretely what we know about this is that the Balenciaga team engineered the prototypes for this collection in their Paris and Zurich studios. We also know because of a New York Times article that Demna said, quote, they talked about how Ye wanted a fabric that was very light, but also warm and makes no sound. Kind of like nylon, but not nylon. Things that seem to be impossible or at least very hard to make technically." End quote. The Gap, as a massive fast fashion corporation, is not set up for challenges like, hey, let's try to make a new textile. That is more in the purview of what luxury brands do. So in that way, Balenciaga was able to offer some infrastructure and some problem solving that likely wouldn't have been there otherwise. By the way, if you own anything from Yeezy Gap, d does it make sound when you move? I'm guessing that this is referring to the pieces that say that they're made of, quote, dry jersey on the website. I'm really curious to know if that's actually accurate. Can someone who owns these things down in the comments just tell me, even if it's like a t-shirt or whatever, does it make sound the way that other cotton t-shirts make when you move around? 
Okay, so th those are kind of the, the concrete things that Demna was able to offer with the Balenciaga side of this collaboration. More abstractly, Ye and Demna just work really well together. Demna consulted on Yeezy Season 1, and he consulted at least by text on Yeezy Season 2. Kanye has clearly been obsessed with Demna's work over the past couple of years, wearing Balenciaga almost exclusively. And Demna, of course, creatively directed those outstanding Donda rollout events, which again, you should watch the video. I don't know of anybody else in fashion who covered this the way that I did. Pretty proud of it. You should watch it. But even outside of that, there's two other kind of abstract, like soft offerings that Balenciaga was able to bring to the table that kind of have to be said. And the, the first one is very obvious. Hype. Gotta say it, the hype is huge on this. As far as forward thinking fashion design is concerned, Balenciaga is king in the luxury department right now, so bringing them onto the project brings an enormous amount of cachet. Really, if, if there was anybody that could bring more just automatic hype cachet more than Ye, it would probably be Balenciaga as a company. But beyond the hype and beyond Demna and Ye being friends and collaborators, I, I think there's an element of this where Balenciaga was brought on to prevent confusion. We're about to get a little bit nuanced here, so if anyone disagrees with me, I'm happy for you to disagree with me. But if you come into my comments and you start talking about stuff and I'm like, that's not what I said, I'm coming for you. Both Ye and Demna take very similar reference points. They both like normal clothes, they both take a lot of inspiration from Martin Margiela, and they both have recently started emphasizing black clothes in a huge way. And the two designers do not have similar final product. I'm not sure I would ever mistake a Yeezy piece for a Balenciaga piece if I was seeing it in stores. But I would describe their aesthetics as complementary to each other. They do kind of look like they belong in the same category somewhat. So someone who is not a fashion head and keeping up with this stuff every day really might look at the Yeezy Gap if Balenciaga wasn't there and say, that just looks like Balenciaga stuff. So my guess is that among many other reasons for bringing him on, the Yeezy team thought it would be good to get ahead of that assumption and bring Demna onto the design team. And we've been kind of surprised. Like, did, did you know that Demna is not on the project anymore? Apparently he was meant to do one season with them and then he's done. He said that his job was to create a foundation from which the Yeezy Gap team could kind of launch off. And you can really see Demna's influence in this final collection. Balenciaga heads will already recognize that the Gap logo kind of reminds them of the recent Pride shirts that Demna put out. The Yeezy Gap sunglasses bear a striking resemblance to the Balenciaga butterfly sunglasses, which of course are based off of Martin Margiela's Spring 2003 show, wherein the sunglasses were extended in shadow onto the model's skin. And you can see my full breakdown of that Margiela show here. I know that all the regular viewers of the channel were just kind of like, I'm just sitting here waiting for Bliss to change the subject to Margiela. <laughs> I think I kept that pretty classy. I think I showed a lot of restraint. But yeah, anyway, this and this does look like this. So there's that. But then there's more subtle stuff as well, like the center pocket on the skin tight pieces looks like it's just the right size to fit a phone into the pocket, but barely have the camera poking out the top. And so it's like kind of almost like a reverse body cam for cops kind of thing where like civilians are being given cameras. So it's kind of the ongoing theme of surveillance that Demna has been pushing at Balenciaga for at this point, three or four years. And there's this vague feeling of Balenciaga with the ongoing dystopian feeling that the Yeezy Gap brand has adopted so strongly. Anything sleek and futuristic and dystopian is going to, at least to me, feel a lot like Balenciaga. Okay, 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 believe it or not, we actually needed to cover all of those things in order to talk about what's actually going on here. Did you notice there's no more curtain over here, by the way? My parents have been working on this room for literally years. And I mean, like as long as I've been filming in this room, there's been a curtain here. This room is finally done. It looks brilliant. We're not gonna go in there, but it's done. You should congratulate my parents. You will remember that we are trying to answer the question, what is Yeezy Gap actually trying to do here? Here is the answer. Ye has always wanted to bring good taste and luxury manufacturing to the masses. You remember a few minutes ago, we were discussing how the first season of Yeezy was all over $1,000. The goal was to bring that price down with no compromises. And he is finally in the best position of his life to do that. And I know, okay, I know that that sounds like a really straightforward goal. Like, yeah, that's what every fashion designer is trying to do. Fashion history is littered with examples of designers that changed the way that people thought about clothes. Like, oh, Christian Dior introduced the new look and you know, Yves Saint Laurent introduced the smoking tuxedo for women. Here's the deal about those. 
I have great respect for all of those designs. Pretty much anyone that you can name who changed the way people thought about clothes, I have enormous respect for what those people did. But the reality is that those people were changing the way that a select group of elite people dressed. The impact of their work and that rolling out to the masses, that took many, many, many years, if it happened at all. They were ultimately guiding the wardrobes of a small group of tastemakers in Paris and New York. They introduced a trend that affected many other trends down the line, some of which are still around today. If you go into any Dior store and you ask them for a bar suit, they will have a bar suit there ready for you. The bar suit creates the hourglass shape that was the, the new look when he first introduced it. It was really revolutionary because there was no corset involved, but it really nipped your waist in. Fashion history. They introduced major trends, but it was by no means an overhaul of how the majority of regular people dressed. Okay. That is what Ye is trying to do. Everyone who watches this channel knows that I am not big on making predictions, but I'm gonna break my own rule here because I think I see what this is trying to become. I think that the ultimate goal with this project is to redefine the way that regular people, non-fashion people, dress on a day-to-day -day basis. He wants to very literally redefine the landscape of how people dress. But the really crazy thing about this is that as a fashion critic, I have no way of saying whether or not this goal is being successfully met. It will just be something that we can see or we won't see. And I, I do think we have to be fair and give it a few years. We're still in a very early part of the rollout of this collaboration. But I think the idea here is that in three or four years, you'll be at a farmer's market or you'll be at a movie and you will look around you and you'll see different groups of people and you'll be like, that's the Yeezy Gap look. That's the Yeezy Gap look right there too. It will, it will literally just be a part of the fabric of our everyday lives. And the rollout that we're in right now is the biggest evidence of this goal of dress everybody. I mean, like the huge army style duffel bags that were at the New York release, the dumpsters for the Miami and the Los Angeles release. The message here seems to very clearly be like, this is the place where clothes come from. Everybody come to the pile and pick out your shirt. And it feels like this is a cooler, more updated version of what The Gap has always preached. This is the default. Come get the clothes from the big pile of clothes. You're already an individual, you can blend into the crowd, and you're still already just yourself. That's it, go join that motherfucking Patreon, greatest fashion community on planet Earth. Seriously, I really do have a just massive group, I, I feel so lucky, I have a massive group of very welcoming, very knowledgeable people that just sit around and talk about clothes all day, it's the best. And it's actually really great because there is just a tiny paywall to that community, it really makes it so much better because everybody has just the tiniest bit of skin in the game. It makes it where everyone is contributing very positively. Everyone is like chill with each other. There's not any of this like chaotic shit posting that constantly happens on Discord. It, it is a really cool place. I've, I've learned an enormous amount by moderating it. Thanks for sticking with me through this. I really appreciate it. I wanna hear what everybody thinks about the Yeezy Gap collection. Please sound off in the comments. And go find other people too whose, uh, whose comments you think are interesting and respond to them. Things are always better if we have some good discussion going. If you know of anything that I missed, anything that I should have included, any other points, any like little things, that, oh, I cannot believe I keep getting that, that's so sick. <laughs> Yeah, if you know of anything I missed, uh, please tell me in the comments as well. I love you and I mean it. Talk to you soon. Peace.